Namaste. Today we're going to talk just a little bit about gathering herbs according to Ayurveda. Ayurveda has some uh, recommendations for gathering herbs. Uh, first they say you should wear white when you go to gather herbs. You should bathe and you should do some spiritual practice before you go so you're in a spiritual mindset. And you should gather herbs from only certain sorts of places. And this is not the ideal place where we are today, but we are gathering just a little bit of herbs because we're making some Maha Narayana Thailam. And we wanted to make just a little video to tell you a little bit about <laughs> gathering herbs. Herbs should be gathered in a natural place, ideally where there people don't pass through. As you see, we're pretty close to a trail here in a park that has a fair amount of foot traffic and some people walk their dogs also through here. So this is not the ideal place for gathering herbs. Uh, if you're going to be taking them internally, you want to make sure that they're clean and not contaminated. Ayurveda says the herb plants should look healthy and there should be no signs of insects eating them. They should not be burned by fire. That makes them inauspicious and we shouldn't use them. They should be growing in abundance. They should be spreading a lot and they should be spreading toward the north. That would be ideal according to Ayurveda. When there's water around the herbs, that's very good. When they're in their natural habitat, growing in a, a predictable way. If they're abnormalities to the herbs, we don't want to use them. We should find a place where we have permission to take the herbs. And it should be from a, a clean source. Uh, shouldn't be right next to a trail, shouldn't be in a cemetery. Uh, shouldn't be around a temple where there could be spiritual energies affecting things. Um, it should be in a, a very pure natural place ideally and so you should take herbs only when they're growing in abundance because you don't want to take the last of the herbs you should be trained by someone who knows how to identify the herbs because if you misidentify the herbs it can be a deadly mistake but the herbs we're getting today we'll just use externally so we don't have to worry so much about cleanliness we're using for an Ayurvedic oil to use outside the skin um, in Mahanarayana oil, they use a lot of tonic herbs. They use the herbs of the Ashtavarga, which are some very important tonic herbs in Ayurveda, cooling tonics, mo many of which are in the lily family. And these herbs are very rare in India and somewhat threatened, and so we like to substitute for them. Uh, several herbs here grow in Virginia that make wonderful, wonderful substitutes, and they grow in profusion. Just down the hill, we saw lots of the wild yam, which we'll be getting right here. We saw just a hill full of wild yam. And so first we'll show you wild yam and just take a little bit of this. This is a cooling tonic herb, which is very, very suitable to use in an oil like Mahanarayana oil. And so wild, wild yam here, um, the root is the medicinal part. This whole area you see there's wild yam there it's spread throughout this area so it, this is an herb which spreads a lot and we've seen it spreading throughout this area so we can take this there's a mantra in Ayurveda recommended in the Ashtanga Hridayam uh, for gathering the herbs it's a prayer for easing the suffering of the plant and blessing the plant at the time of digging it it's a meditative practice to chant at the time of collecting herbs it centers you and it, it's an offering to the plant which is sacrificing itself for our benefit and this mantra is Om Mahindra Ramakrishna Nam Brahmananam Gavamapi Tapasatejasavapi so I've got a tool here for helping me to get to the root. And this one has a very big, healthy looking root here. And this is going to continue to spread and connect to these other ones here. But we'll just take a little piece here. See, it's a nice piece. As we're collecting herbs like this, we don't need the leaves, so we can leave that. We try to leave the ground looking about the way it was when we got to it. If you just place this in a paper bag and don't seal it, it lets it breathe a little bit and it will start to dry out rather than rotting as you carry it until you can dry it properly, or we'll use this fresh. 
So this here is an Asaram species, a type of native wild ginger. This is a variegated variety which is growing wild all over this place. It has anti-rheumatic properties. It has a little bit of a peppery gingery smell which is why they call it wild ginger. It can be used a lot like ginger in medicine. This is also suitable for our herbal oil, so we'll take a little of the root of this also. So we want to show you one herb which is called Solomon's Seal. Solomon's Seal is very useful as a substitute for the Ashtavarga herbs in Ayurveda. Two of the Ashtavarga herbs, Meda and Mahameda, are actually species of Solomon's Seal native to India. In Virginia we have a native species of Solomon's Seal. They, are, they all used to be in the lily family, now they are in the asparagus family, but the botanical name, the genus, is Polygonatum. And the species of this one is Polygonatum biflorum. And so here we have the Solomon seal, and you can tell here by the berries hanging down underneath. There used to be flowers hanging down like bells underneath. And the false Solomon seal can be differentiated because the flowers and berries will come out to the end. We'll show you that later. We will not harvest this one due to its proximity to poison ivy. Okay. So here is a mature false Solomon seal. You can tell by it would have had flowers here at the end and now it has the berries here toward the end. This is a really big older one. Um, we're right across from where we saw the little younger ones. So it shows that it, it's spreading. Also, once it, it's made the berries, if, if the berries ripen or get pretty ripe, then you can leave the berries and that will help it to seed itself out. So we lost, I mean we, we broke off the, the stem, but that's okay because we can still get this root. If we leave some root in there, there may be a chance that it will grow back. Or we can try to keep digging and see if we can find more because it definitely, a piece snapped off in there. There's not much, actually. Let me go wash this so you can see it better. Oh, it's a little froggy. You see him? Yeah. The Solomon seal will often have a little round part like that. It's like a seal, like a round seal on the root. That's why they call it Solomon seal. And so this is from the false Solomon seal. False Solomon seal has it also. And this has tonic properties. And so it's a suitable substitute in the same family, uh, the asparagus family, suitable substitute for Meda or Maha Meda in Ayurveda.